Yashraf al Yawal Mursaleen. First of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee, the Saudi Spine Society, and Mr. Chairman. So what I'll be talking about today is the diagnostic approach and the management of spondyloarthritis. I'm going to go over these items, including the case presentation and the spectrum of the spondyloarthropathy. But I'm going to update you on the things that have been mentioned at the American College of Rheumatology meeting that was a month ago. So let's go over the case. I have a 33-year-old female who presented with six-month history with a classical inflammatory back pain. She didn't have any family history of the spondyloarthropathy, but she was a smoker. And her systemic review that was mentioned previously was negative. On the physical examination, she had signs that consistent with, this, uh, with, with SI joint involvement. And her investigation showed a positive HLA beta 27, and the MRI of the SI joint were abnormal. That's showing increase in the signal intensity in both of the sacroiliac joints. So it was consistent with the non-radiographic spa. So Dr. Ziad already mentioned when to investigate and when to look for a patient for, with axillospondyloarthropathy. This is the ASAS criteria, and this is an important slide if you would like to take a screenshot of it. So we only apply this criteria if the age of the patient was less than 45 years of age in addition to inflammatory type of back pain more than three months. So you could either have sacroiliacus on imaging, and we mean by imaging that is MRI of the spine or the blood work on the left side, and then you have the other criteria. Now these are the positive findings that our patient have. The sensitivity and the specificity is high, about 82 to 97 percent. And if you use the MRI of the SI joint alone, your specificity will go up to 97 percent. Now the problem is somebody may ask me why I don't use the HLA beta 27 alone to diagnose the patient. You're absolutely right, it's already there. But it have a low prevalence in our society, low sensitivity, and the recommendation where if you want to start the patient on the expensive biologic treatment, you should have a positive MRI finding of the SI joint. So the spectrum of the spondyloarthropathy, it's divided into two. We have either the non-radiographic spondyloarthropathy on the left side and the radiographic stage. Non, now the non-radiographic changes are MRI positive, X-ray negative and the radiographic changes are the X-ray positive and the MRI positive as well. As Dr. Ziad mentioned, we have a diagnostic del delay, including in the kingdom. It will take up to six years for the patient in order to come to rheumatology. So we know that within two years' time, 10% of the patient will develop X-ray finding, i.e. damage. And within 10 years' time, 50% already develop these changes. So we have the ASAS criteria, and the beauty about the ASAS criteria that you could diagnose the non-radiographic finding for the SI joint first before the vertical involvement by the MRI or even of the X-ray of the, of the sacroiliac joint and the vertebrae. So how to approach? Doctora, so right now I know that the MRI is good. We know that we have certain symptoms suggestive of inflammatory back pain. We know that there are certain signs that we have to look for, but how to approach it? A, like medical school, history and physical examination. History looking for the inflammatory back pain. And for the ASAS, we have 10 questions. I always teach my medical student and the trainee that you have 10 questions you have to give to the patient. Now, I know it's difficult, and I know sometimes it's hard to memorize it. That's why you have two pamphlets that there are available at the booth of the Saudi Society of Rheumatology, and please feel free to take one for the inflammatory back pain and assess criteria. And I always recommend for my trainee and my doctors to have them in their pocket during the clinic. The physical examination include examination of the SI joint and the spot criteria, right which is beyond the scope of this lecture. And finally, we have the investigation, which are the inflammatory marker, the HLA beta 27 that we mentioned previously, and the X-ray. But remember, even if the X-ray were normal, you're still going to go ahead for the MRI of the SI joint in order to justify starting the new biologic medication. So let's go over quickly the treatment of the spondyloarthropathy. 
both FDA, non-FDA, and what did the guidelines recommended over the past month? So we have the American College of Rheumatology guidelines. There is the, the European College uh, uh, guidelines as well. So let's start with a brainstorming question. Which one of the following is an FDA approved treatment for spondyloarthropathy? Is it NSAID, steroid, methotrexate, which is a DMARD, sulfasalazine, or none of the above? Just keep it in your mind. Now, this is the guidelines that we use, and this is the beauty of rheumatology. I don't want you to remember all of that, but I'm just going to give you a hint. When you consider referring the patient to us, at least what you could start. So let's start with the first one, the NSAID, or the non-steroid and anti-inflammatory. So it's the first line therapy, and it's better than placebo. And there's no difference in using one NSAID to the other NSAID. And as Dr. Ziad said, it's a better response than a mechanical back pain. And this is the treatment which is FDA approved. Now the NSAID does, studies did show that it improved radiographic progression of the uh, spondyloarthropathy. Number two, it's mostly effective, believe it or not, in patients with active inflammation, either by high CRP or by a positive MRI showing a sadismophile. And the third point is you should start with the high dose and continuous for the patient. Now I'm an internist, and what's my big fear, a nightmare from the NSAID is heart failure and peptic ulcer disease. So, I, so in addition to cardiac attack, and actually, the meta-analysis showed there's no increase in the cardiovascular event. If you look at the lines, it's on the left side in comparison to the other medication. So what did the guidelines recommended about a month ago? I'm just going to go into details because that's what, I, what we need your help in. Continuous NSAID and the ULR guideline recommended to use at least two NSAID over four weeks time. Number two. Physiotherapy versus no physiotherapy. And this is a strong recommendation, which means it's based on the RCT trials. Land-based versus aquatic and unsupervised back exercise. And they were against the use of the systemic steroid. So no IM or oral steroid in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. Now let's go to the second point. Okay, so I gave my patient the NSAID, and then the patient came back to me how do I assess the disease activity and to know if the disease was active? We have the, an application called an ASDAS, which we downloaded from our iPhone. And we could tell if the patient have inactive, moderate, high, or very high disease activity. And actually, my patient, when I apply it to her, she had the high disease activity. Now, the third part is, what about if the patient didn't respond to the NSAID, didn't respond to the physiotherapy, and she reached me at that point? Now, this is the beauty of rheumatology. Now, this is my part. I'm going to justify that this patient have an active disease, and I will start the biologic agent, whether it was anti-TNF or non-anti-TNF. Now, this is just to show you, if you look at the far right, we have many FDA-approved biologic, whether it was anti-TNF, or non-anti-TNF, i.e. different mechanism of action. That's an ankylosing spondylitis. Now, in non-radiographic spa, on the left side, the FDA did not, as well as the EMA, approve the use of this medication, except if you have an active signs of inflammation of the MRI. And that's why we need to do an MRI of the SI joint, not the pelvis, not the hip. There's one point that I would like to highlight for you, and that's what they even stressed on it within the American College of Rheumatology in Chicago about a month ago. They were against local injection of the Achilles tender, the patellar, or the quadriceps. Now, this was published in 2016, and the draft was out about a month ago. So why they were against it? The guideline was in 2015 and 2016 when they say it's, they are against it, simply because your patient does not respond to medication. They do not respond to the local steroid infection. This is a case that I reported in 2013. Before the GRABA and the American College of Rheumatology, they were against the use of the, system, of the, intra, uh, of the local steroid, and before they approved the biologic for enthesitis. I had a young patient who was having his scholarship in Canada, 
and unfortunately his Achilles stendonitis was so severe, cast, local injection, physiotherapy, with no improvement, to the extent he had to cut his scholarship and come back to Saudi Arabia. And that's the time when I started him on one of the biologic, and alhamdulillah, fadlallah azzawajal, he's much better, and he went back to his scholarship, and he's done right now. So let's go back to my case. So she was doing her PhD, so she went back to the U.S. at that time with the Humera, i.e. one of the biologic agents. And surprise, surprise, her brother was doing a master in the U.K., and he was diagnosed with SPA. And he was actually beta 27 as well, and they gave him biologic agent, the same biologic which is human. Now, I'm not advertising it, but I do have a point about that. When she came to, to the follow-up in the clinic, she brought her father with her, who's a 65-year-old, very healthy, with absolutely no past medical history. He had a degenerative disc disease surgery about two years ago in the state. And he hasn't been active since then. He's a very active man, and he has muscles even. But unfortunately, since the surgery, he wasn't able to be as active as he used to be. And he noticed that he had a different type of back pain. So when I took the history, it was consistent with inflammatory back pain. And when I dig more in the history, I recognized that that gentleman, he was suffering from inflammatory back pain since the age of 19. But he was treating himself with physiotherapy, i.e. with exercise. So he never required any treatment. But since his sedentary lifestyle, after his surgery, then he noticed that he needed help. When he saw the rheumatologist in the US who gave him one of the anti-TNF, which is gulimumab, he didn't notice any effect. And he saw her, her, uh, uh, his daughter, how she's getting benefit from the treatment. He opened the fridge, he took the Humera, and he injected himself, and he found, wow, I feel fabulous. So he came to the clinic requesting the same drug that his son and daughter are taking. Okay? Shukran. So that's when I switched him to Adalimumab. I saw both of them in April 2018, and they had a non-active disease, and I started to taper their medication. Now, early referral is required to start optimum therapy. We need you. As a rheumatology, we need you. A survey has been done by my colleagues from Riyadh, from Mecca, from Jeddah. 65% of the patient with rheumatological problem, they see orthopedic surgeon. Then they see general practitioner, then they see physiotherapist, and we only 3% of the patient. So we need you to prevent morbidity and mortality. So to summarize everything, diagnosis of SPA is very simple. It just needs a high index of suspicion. You need to apply the inflammatory back pain criteria. And we made it so easy for you. Just have your copy. You need to apply the assess criteria. And again, it needs high index of suspicion. Treatment is required in early stage, which is the non-radiographic SPA before the damage and the x-ray uh, changes happen. Uh, and finally, please, when you diagnose the patient, we really appreciate the start, the physiotherapy and the NSAID. So when the patient come and did not respond to treatment, we could go over the next step, which is the biologic therapy. On behalf of the Saudi Society of Rheumatology, I would like to thank all of you for inviting, uh, for inviting us, me, Dr. Ziad, on behalf of the chairman of the Saudi Society of Rheumatology, who wasn't able to come today, I would like to invite you to our meeting, which is going to be in March in Riyadh. And within that meeting, as a part of the Zaidi Chair of the Rheumatic Disease member, I would like to invite the trainee and the resident, if you want to learn about the sacroiliac joint examination, about the spa, I'm going to be the one who's giving the lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.